Hey guys, welcome to the first video on linear regression. Um, I'm just going to use this problem, but I'm actually not going to answer the question that they're asking here. I'm just going to remind you guys on how to do a lot of things um, that are required in most questions, whether it's on the AP or college textbooks or whatever. So let's just take a look at what we have here. It says listed below are altitudes in thousands of feet and outside air temperature degrees Fahrenheit recorded during a Delta flight 1053. So let's take a look at this. Typically, that's always your X. It's either the first row or the first column, whether they tell you or they don't. Typically, that's how we write it. So that yellow highlighter will be your X. Your temperature would be your Y. So it depends, basically, uh, the temperature depends on how high you are um, in the air. Okay. So what we're going to do here is first and foremost, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So n equals seven data points. And what you want to do in this case is remind yourself that if you are going to run a test or a um, confidence interval, the degrees of freedom is always n minus two. So that's going to be five. Okay. So that's the first thing. Second, always remind yourself that if you're going to run a confidence interval or a hypothesis test, it's always a T, never a Z, okay? Because it's based on samples. So let's get to this problem. Typically, this problem, they'll ask you for a linear regression. Linear regression, we see the word line. We know in mathematics, Y equals MX plus B, but for this type of problem for linear regressions, we typically write the slope after the y-intercept. So this guy, just a friendly reminder, is the slope. This guy is the y-intercept. So we are going to write y. And instead of doing mx plus b, we typically write a plus bx. Okay? So we're going to insert these numbers into our calculator. At any time, pause the video and type it in for yourself. So I did that for you guys here. I pressed stat and I went to edit. Edit allows you to put everything in there. I put these numbers in L1, these numbers into L2. Once you are done inserting the numbers, you press stat again, okay? Then you go over to calc. Now, when you get to calc, you're going to have either number four or number eight. They are both identical. The only difference is in number four, you guys can see that they put the slope first. And in number eight, they put the slope after the y-intercept. And this is typically why we choose letter, uh, I'm sorry, number eight. Okay, so I press number eight. I press enter, um, enter, and then I say list one, list two. Now, I usually almost always don't have a frequency list. This is blank, this is blank. Now, some of you might have something other than list one and list two into your um, X list and your Y list. The way that you get it to be list one or list two, or let's say you have something in list one and list two you don't wanna delete. The way to access any of the lists is, if you take a look, anything, these are all blue. List one, list two, list three, list four, list five, and so on. In order to access anything blue, you have to hit the second button. So you just press second, one, you'll get L1. Second, two, you'll get L2, and so on. So when I did that, and obviously I did this on purpose, when I pressed calculate, I only got A plus BX. What we wanna have is a correlation coefficient and the coefficient of determination. In other words, we wanna have R and R squared with us. And I don't have that here. So how do I get that? Well, I'm glad you asked. So you press mode, okay? It's right there. After you press mode, you go down here. What you'll notice is your stat diagnostic is off, okay? What I did was I go down here and I turn the stat diagnostic on by clicking the right arrow. Now, what you have to do from here is just get out of the screen, okay? It doesn't kick you out of the screen, so you're just gonna press second, quit, and now you're back to the front. Now, you are going to have to run it again, okay? It's not gonna just pop up. You have to press 
Once again, you're going to have to go back, run this whole thing again. So you're gonna have to press uh, stat, go down to number eight, enter, 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 and then this will pop up. And that's basically how you get it. All right, the most important thing is interpreting this data. So what I always do is I do y hat equals a plus bx because y hat represents a prediction line. So y is your actual number and y hat is your prediction based off of this prediction line. So this is what I do. I go y hat equals 72.6626. Uh-oh, minus. I kept told you it was negative because the higher you go up in the air, the lower the temperature is. Um, and we should have probably discuss that earlier, but it's no big deal. Um, my slope is negative. And x. You must tell the reader where x is and where y is. It's called defining your variables. Now remember, x is the altitude and y is the temperature, okay? You can also just write that straight up in here. I don't know why I did that, sorry. Let's get it. Um, so you guys can also just take this and write it right here instead of defining it down there, okay? Temperature. Okay, so you must define your parameter, um, your variables x and y hat only in this case. Now, once I have that, one of the most famous questions is to interpret this data. So 72.6626 is your y-intercept. So this question here says, what is the y-intercept? So you literally say the y-intercept is 72.66. I believe it was 26. Interpret this. Well, the y-intercept means that when x equals 0, so what is x? You just replace it with the context. When the altitude is 0, the degrees is predicted because, remember, it's equal to y-hat, right? So the degrees is predicted to be 72 or 73, okay? Roughly 72 or 73. So when the altitude is zero, in other words, when x equals zero, that's what your y-intercept is. The degrees is predicted to be about 73. So if you think about it, x equals zero, let's get a different color, cancels this whole thing out. All you have here, and remember, it's y hat equals, okay? The next part is, what is the slope? The slope is negative three point, I'm just gonna round for this, Okay, negative 3.7, okay, just for this problem. You shouldn't round that much. Um, the slope is negative 3.7. So how do we interpret this? So this is the best way to interpret this. The slope is the change in y over the change in x. Typically, that's how we describe a slope. The y is your temperature, and the x is your altitude, okay? So what I do is every slope should be described as a fraction. So I'm just going to put this over 1. And what I do is I say the bottom part first. So what I say is for every 1, and I believe it's a 1,000, right? So it's in thousands. For every 1 in thousands, um, altitude or height of the plane increases. So as the height in the plane increases by 1000, okay, the temperature decreases by 3.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this word decreases takes care of this negative sign. Please do not say it decreases by negative 3.7, okay? And that's typically how we do it. We say for every 1x, the y increases or decreases by this amount, okay? Everything has to be in context. So that's how we do that. 
now we have the r and the r squared. Now what you'll notice here, guys, is that the r is also negative. That's because the slope and the correlation coefficient match with their signs. So negative 0.9963 is amazing. It's close to 1. If you guys remember, a correlation close to 1 is just about a perfect relationship, never a causation. So I'm just going to leave it as negative 0.99. You should always have three, excuse me, you should always have four decimal places. Never, ever make a correlation coefficient into a percentage, okay? Um, R is negative 0.99, so you're going to say... Um, the correlation coefficient is negative 0.99, and then we have to interpret this value. Um, there is a strong, because you need a strong or weak, okay, negative, strong negative and linear relationship between altitude and temperature. Now, what I always tell my students to do is write a second sentence that says, as the altitude increases, the temperature decreases. And that's basically the same thing as saying it's negative. So as the altitude increases, the temperature decreases. Okay. And that's how you describe a correlation coefficient. You want to use three words. Okay. Strong or weak, positive or negative, linear or nonlinear. Now, you might say, well, how do we know it's linear? Typically, when we do a linear regression, we say it's linear. If it was going to be nonlinear, you would have to have a scatter plot alongside so you could take a look at the trend. Okay, so now here's the last one. What is the correlation? Uh, sorry, what is the coefficient of determination? Well, that is R squared, okay? So R squared is probably really, really high. So 0.9927. So... 99.7%. Um, in this case, we make it into a percentage. All right. So um, we say 99.7% of the variation in Y, so in temperature, can be explained by a linear relationship between x and y so between altitude and temperature sorry my handwriting is getting messy but hopefully you could hear my beautiful voice um so r squared is 99.7 percent 99.7 percent of the variation in the temp can be explained by a linear relationship between altitude and temperature now i'm going to stop this video because i think this is a good length come back for a second video on linear regression where i'll talk about the residuals and talk about how to read some of the um, computer outputs. So I hope everyone's having a great day.